Greetings, everyone. It's Mad Mike here once again with 32 Manias with Mike. Um, we had to make a return tri trip to Trump Plaza this time around for WrestleMania 5. The Mega Powers explode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I think this is the first modern WrestleMania. I'll get into my reasoning as I run through the whole card and everything, but I think this is the first real modern WrestleMania. Uh, it just seems like it. But before I get into the whole the whole show, I have to talk a little bit about Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura is a weird, weird animal in WWF at this point. Uh, he's he's a commentator. He's he's color commentator. He was a former wrestler, obviously. He plugs that he's been in movies um, like Predator. You know, basically any movie Arnold Schwarzenegger was in in the late 80s. Jesse Ventura was probably also in. Also, Batman Robin. Yeah, by the way, Jesse Ventura was in Batman Robin. If you didn't know, he's the guy that says, Okay, Freezy, you can't live outside the cold zone. Yeah, basically, that's him. Um, but Jesse Ventura... This is the third WrestleMania in a row this has happened. I'm not sure if it's in his contract or not, but we always take out a very specific allotted amount of time during WrestleMania for Jesse Ventura to just pose for the crowd. It's very weird. No one has... I, I, I've never seen any explanations why... We do this. I mean, yeah, Jesse Jesse Ventura still had a great figure and everything of physique. Excuse me. Uh, but I, it, it just seemed like once, okay, once I get Pontiac Silverdome, he wants his moment over in front of the 82,000. I get that. That's fine. The WrestleMania 4, okay. A little weird. We have a lot of stuff to get to at WrestleMania 4. Don't know if we exactly have time for it, but sure, Jesse. And now it's three years in a row. Um, I don't get it. I, I don't get it. Like, the, this was a thing back in the day. I'm not sure why. Uh, Jesse Ventura, to my... Like, I don't even know how many people at that point knew Ventura was a wrestler. Because you got to remember, this is 1989. WrestleMania started five years ago, and Jesse Ventura wasn't involved in that, so I'm not sure. But um, so if it, please, if anyone knows what the deal was, like, is this in his contract that he just gets to pose? I don't know. Um, but yeah, hit me up on on the YouTube or on the Twitters uh, at Mad Mike Four Eight Eight Three. Let me know if you know what's up with this, because I don't. Anyway, to the show, um. We continue our lackluster America the Beautiful as um, the, the singer this time is WWF Women's Champion Rockin' Robin. I don't know. Two and three had the best showing so far. Uh, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's very odd. It's very odd. It's almost like Donald Trump doesn't attract celebrities. Um, sorry. <laughs> Speaking of Donald Trump, he's actually there. Uh, you can see him pretty much for the whole show if you really look. And oh man, if now I watched these two WrestleManias back to back, um, he looks a little bit different than he did WrestleMania four. It's really kind of fun to just watch how different that motherfucker can look within the time frame of one year. Um, I think WrestleMania four was when someone's hair started to do things. So WrestleMania five was when he started to do things to his hair. Anyway, um, I this this mania is really fun. Uh, it has a lot of special memories for me, not because I watched this mania when I was a kid. I didn't. Uh, I I probably watched it at some point, like renting it at a uh, at a video treats. If you guys remember video treats or videos or renting. Um, no, but the pay-per-view directly after this is SummerSlam 1989, and that was the first ever pay-per-view that your boy Mad Mike watched. So I am intrinsically familiar with WrestleMania 5 without seeing it 
because SummerSlam, a lot of the stuff that we have here built from WrestleMania five. Uh, so let, let's, let's start this on, on the rundown. Uh, the first, again, this is the first modern WrestleMania to me. Just about everyone had theme music. Just about everyone. There are a few people like Andre giant traditionally never had theme music. Um, Ted DiBiase at this point did not have theme music, but just about everyone else did. And it really, it cha- And we have a lot, a lot less focus on celebrities. And we actually have backstage commentators. We have Sean Mooney. You know, lo- you know, Sean Mooney, you love Sean Mooney and, uh, Tony Schiavone. Yeah. This is the time when Schiavone was actually employed by WWF. And, I gotta be honest, the backstage announcers, they were really good. A lot of good stuff coming from the backstage announcers. Um, but anyway, the first match is Hercules and King Haku. Uh, cool thing about this is Haku came out on the giant throne that we've all seen with almost every other king and Charlotte just recently. And Haku was carried to the ring. Uh, Haku lost. Hercules won. You know, Bobby Heenan is all over this pay-per-view. He really is. He even wrestles. Bobby Heenan is everywhere on this fucking pay-per-view, and it's great because Bobby Heenan, he's a goddamn treasure. He really is. All right. uh, The next match is a tag team affair, and if you know your WrestleMania history, you know a certain someone made his WrestleMania debut, WrestleMania 5, and that is Mr. WrestleMania himself, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. However, he's in the Rockers in this, so he's not necessarily that high on the totem pole. Um, it's the they actually do get a backstage interview though, and Shawn Michaels is really good. You can tell. I, I hate to coin a phrase here, but you can tell who's the Shawn and who's the Marty. Uh, yeah, but the the Rockers had a tough draw. They're going up against Twin Towers, Akeem and the Big Boss Man. And it's honestly a really fun match. Like the Rockers, you can tell already they bring a different style to the tag team wrestling that we've seen in WrestleMania's past. Uh, the Rockers just bring something different. They really do. It's and Akeem and Boss Man, I gotta give them credit. They're working. They are working in this match. Like it's really, really fun. Uh, the Twin Towers eventually do get the win. Shawn Michaels does not win his first WrestleMania match, which is fine. A lot of people don't. But yeah, it was a really good match. Um, then we move to again these older WrestleManias. They don't care what the finish is. They don't care for fans. Like if fans want definitive finishes, they don't care. They won't let that happen a lot. We got Bruce the Bar Beefcake versus Ted DiBiase, and DiBiase basically just walks out. Just walks out. Uh, Bruce Beefcake goes out after him, and both guys get counted out. Yeah, double count out on WrestleMania, third match on the card. But, you know, it is what it is. But after that, we get something really fun. And, again, this, to me, is the first modern WrestleMania because it they're showing us, like, the stuff that happens before WrestleMania, the stuff for the fans in the area, they showed... Stuff from the WrestleMania brunch. And Mean Gene Oakland is cutting an interview with the Bushwhackers. And the Bushwhackers are talking, but their mouths are so full of food that the promo is unintelligible, which is great. Uh, If you know the Bushwhackers, this is also their WrestleMania debut. This will not be their last. But the Bushwhackers are going up, up against one of my favorite tag team names of all time. Um, uh, not not tag teams. Not they're not my favorite tag team, but they do have one of the best theme songs of all time. And the Bushwhackers are going up against the fabulous Rujo Brothers, Jacques and Raymond. If you've never heard the fabulous Rujo Brothers theme song, just look up All American Boys. Kick back with a drink, listen to that shit on loop for a half hour. And thank Mad Mike. And then, I don't know, salute the American flag or something. Because it's amazing. Their theme song is the absolute best. Uh, 
because they're all American boys. Uh, and they lost. Yeah, Bushwhackers, <laughs> Bushwhackers win a lot, except when it counts. Uh, Bushwhackers are mainly, they're, they're a feel-good story for the fans. And the Bushwhackers won with their battering ram. Now, uh, this next match, oh, I kind of want to give it my favorite, my my bet, my favorite match on the card. I don't know if I'm going to yet, but it's two WrestleMania debuts, you guys. And if you know anything about Mad Mike, you know both these men. I, they're in my top five, top top five, top ten, top ten. They're in my top ten wrestlers of all time. Mr. Perfect, Kurt Henning, and the debuting Blue Blazer. Now, I'm sure you all know who the Blue Blazer is, but we didn't at that point. We didn't know that it was Owen Hart. But, ah, oh, man. Kurt Henning versus Owen Hart in 1989. It's as good as you want it to be. It's not as long as you want it to be. But, damn, if it's super fun. Um, Perfect gets the win because he still has his undefeated streak going, but Ah, uh, I could watch that match uh, countless times. Countless times. It was really, really good. Uh, and then, and this was the spoiler alert I talked about on WrestleMania 4. Demolition! The second longest reigning tag team champions right now. Um, went up against the Powers of Pain and Mr. Fuji. Yeah, it was a handicap match. Handicap match for the tag straps. But the cool thing about this was they actually showed Mr. Fuji was in good shape because apparently WrestleMania had a 5K. Did you guys know this? I didn't know this. WrestleMania in Vegas and uh, Atlantic City had a 5K, and Mr. Fuji ran the whole fucking thing. They, showed, they, showed, they didn't show him running the whole thing, but they showed him running the whole thing, basically. And it was a really fun match. Um a lot of hoss fight stuff because I mean Axe, Smash, Warlord, Barbarian, they're all they're all big jacked up monsters. Uh, they're all beating the crap out of each other. Fuji's in there. Fuji does take the pin, but really fun match. Really fun match. Um, and of course, Demolition also great entrance theme. Great entrance theme. Uh, moving along to a match that didn't really connect for me. Dino Bravo defeated Rugged Ronnie Garvin. Um. Rugged Ronnie Garvin, I don't know much about. I know he was Hands of Stone Garvin in NWA. Um, but I only have experience from him with WWF. And he's such a weird character. He's such a weird character. I don't really know what to make of him. Um, but yeah, it, it was a match. It's kind, kind of filler. It's kind of filler. I mean, you really can't. Dino Bravo got the win. I didn't expect that because I know Rugged Ronnie Garvin was new at that point. But um, yeah, so that, that was it. I mean, it was it was very short. It was three minutes, so you don't have to worry too much about that. But the next match, ah, oh, hey, did you guys know that uh, Bobby Heenan managed half of the Four Horsemen one time? I bet you didn't. Um, Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard were in WWF at this point, and they called themselves the Brain Busters. Now, um, they went up against Strike Force, and I do believe this is a WrestleMania first. I do believe this is a first. I apologize if I said it recent, uh, in a past episode. I don't think I have. But I think this is our first WrestleMania heel turn, y'all. Like, uh, and... The Hogan thing I talked about doesn't count because that's just in my head, my own head canon. But this is the first official WrestleMania heel turn, I believe. Um, Rainbusters and Strike Force, Tio Santana, Rick Martel, awesome match. All four wrestlers, tremendous, tremendous athletes. If you've ever seen them perform, you know they are. You know what kind of match they can have together. Um, but the announcers are talking like this: that Strike Force has been around a long time, and you know that. There might be some friction going on. We don't really see it because they seem to still be working together pretty well. But then uh, Tito Santana inadvertently hits Rick Martel with a flying forearm, knocks him to the floor. And, you know, we've seen stuff like that happen all the time. It happens to Brainbusters 
a little bit right after that. Like, Arn, uh, Tully knocks into Arn by accident. But Rick Martel gets back up on the apron eventually as Tio Santana is just getting destroyed. The, the, the Brain Busters are just wrecking shop on Tito. Tio Santana is finally able to crawl over to his corner, and Rick Martel is still holding his head in pain, selling it like Peter Griffin. And then he just walks away, drops down, and bounces. And everyone is floored. It's amazing. It's fantastic. Because the first time I ever heard of Tio Santana and Rick Martel is at SummerSlam 89, and they're on the opposite sides of six-man tag. So when I heard of Strike Force, I'm like, oh, that's weird. I wonder when they broke up. This is it. And it was amazing. And I mean, as you can imagine, the Brain Busters, they beat the crap out of Tito Santana after it and destroy him with a spike pile driver of all things. But yeah, uh, by the way, pile drivers were legal back then. This is way before um, Austin got his neck broke. Yeah, pile drivers are super legal back here. Uh, so if you ever want to see some pile drivers, there's a lot of them on this show. But yeah, uh, Brain Busters win, then spoiler alert, they'll eventually go on to win the tag titles this year. Yeah, fun fact. Arn Anderson, former WWF tag team champion. Uh, they actually beat Demolition, I believe. Yeah. All right, uh, so moving on. After this match, they had to have a little bit of a break. And that break was called Piper's Pit. Now, they they have the whole ring set up in in, in kilt, kiltic garb. And um, first we introduce Brother Love. Um, and he talks for a while. Like, And this is, what, this is another reason why I say it's the first modern WrestleMania. We have an entire segment dedicated to a celebrity, basically. Morton Daddy Jr. Uh, now... Those of you who don't know who Morton Downey Jr. is, he is not related to Robert Downey Jr. I looked this up. I wanted to make sure because it seems way too convenient. So, no. this uh, Morton Downey Jr. was basically the Howard Stern of the 1980s. Not as successful, but in tone and, you know, shock jock humor, basically. But, um, so, so Bruce Pritchard, excuse me, Brother Love comes down. Uh, he actually does a decent Roddy Piper impression, which is kind of funny because Brother Love interviews Roddy Piper or Brother Rodney. So he goes back and forth. He actually talks to himself. It's kind of funny. Um, Morton Daddy Jr. comes out, and it's a really weird segment. Uh, you can tell the crowd's turning on it a little bit. When Piper comes out, it gets a little bit better, but it also goes on forever. Like, if you've ever seen the clip of this, all you see is, don't pull no smoke in my face, Mr. Downey. That's all you see. And then Piper breaks out the uh, fire extinguisher, and that's it. And you think it's a five-minute five minute segment. Oh, no. This thing almost goes on for about 15 minutes. It is a long segment. Um, But, yeah, it that's stuff we see at WrestleManias all the time now. And, by the way... We complain about WrestleMania being super long. This WrestleMania was three hours and 40 minutes. They had 14 matches on it. So, uh, yeah, this this stuff used to happen all the time. I'm not sure why it's so long, but hey, you know what? I think we do chop it down to three hours, like a tight three hours at some point in the 90s. But as of right now, they're just going. I think it has to do, like, I think the pay-per-view restrictions start to get a little bit stricter in the 90s, and that's probably why we chopped it to three. But, yeah, this is the second pay-per-view in a row, the second WrestleMania in a row where it's gone over three and a half hours. So, yeah. Uh, but back to the action. Really fun match coming up uh, with a special guest referee, like an actual special guest referee. I'm pretty sure it's the first time we've had that in WrestleMania, so that's another WrestleMania first. The special referee is Big John Studd. Now, fun thing about this, I realized that as Big John Studd was coming out, Big John Studd actually has the same theme music that Hacksaw Jim Duggan would later use, except without the hose thrown in. So really kind of fun. Um, but it's Jake the Snake Roberts against Andre the Giant. 
Now, uh, you guys know your WrestleMania history if you've been watching these. Andre and Big John said, not necessarily the biggest fans of each other. You know, the whole $15,000 slam challenge. But it's a little twisted this time because this time, Andre's with Bobby Heenan and Stud is the face. Very odd. And as we all know, Andre the Giant, very afraid of snakes. Um, This whole match is basically Jake trying to fight off Andre, trying to get the snake out of the bag. Uh, Ted DiBiase comes out at one point to grab the bag with Damien in it, and Andre the Giant attacks Big John Sud. It's basically just a clusterfuck. Uh, y- y- Jake wins by disqualification because Andre hit Big John Stud. Andre and Big John Stud fight. Jake Roberts takes down DiBiase and then throws a snake in the ring. That's basically it. That- that's all. That's all we need to do to do- to get there. There, but uh, the next match, oh. All right, this is fun. This is fun. Uh, the Hart Foundation against the Honky Tonk Man and Greg Valentine, also known as Rhythm and Blues, with Jimmy Hart in their corner. Colonel Jimmy Hart. Excuse me. Colonel Jimmy Hart. Now, uh, Jimmy Hart used to manage the Hart Foundation. So this is kind of like a revenge match. The Hart's Brett and Neidhart are the faces. Brett's wearing the wraparound shades. He doesn't give, He's not giving them to a fan yet. But he's wearing the silver wraparound shades. So we're kind of almost at that Bret Hart level, you guys. Uh, but yeah, it's really fun. It's a really good match. And I think the cool thing about this is Jimmy Hart tried to set up a distraction like he would with the megaphone. But because the Hart Foundation was also managed by Jimmy Hart, they know the same tricks. So while the referee is distracted, Anvil drops to the outside, grabs the megaphone, tosses it into Brett. Brett smacks Honky in the face, and the Hart Foundation win. Really, really cool finish. Very creative. I really enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was just really fun. And also, I forgot to mention, at one point during this WrestleMania, Run DMC comes out to perform the WrestleMania rap. Uh, you can tell the acoustics were not great in Trump Plaza. Uh, I, had the, I had the closed captioning up, and they could barely pull out the lyrics but i'm sure there's a nut much cleaner version somewhere of the wrestlemania rap somewhere on youtube but yeah uh run dmc so i would have liked to hear run dmc do america the beautiful myself i think that would have been amazing but what do i know uh but all right moving on this uh, this match it's for the air continental championship the champion the ultimate warrior going up against ravishing rick rude um, it's a standard warrior match that you've seen, like a lot, of, a lot of rest holds, a lot of punching, but Ravishing Rick Rude and Bobby Heenan are so good. So good. Um, like there's a point where Rude's been worn down with a bunch of bear hugs and stuff like that. And then Rude knocks down warrior and tries to do the hip swivel. And he's selling that he can't do the hip swivel because his back hurts. It's amazing. Um, uh, but yeah, this match actually ends with Warrior suplexing uh, Rick Rude into the ring, but Bobby Heenan pulling the leg of the Ultimate Warrior, so Rude collapses on him, and Ravishing Rick Rude becomes the Intercontinental Champion by beating the Ultimate Warrior. Uh, to my knowledge, I think it's the first loss for the Warrior. I think it is. I'm not positive. I'm not positive on that, so don't quote me on it, but and I can't believe this is true. I'm pretty sure what, what Jesse Ventura was saying was that this is the first time Bobby Heenan has ever managed a champion. That seems unfathomable to me. Because Bobby Heenan, as you guys know, probably the greatest manager of all time. Uh, it, it seems unreal to me that he's never managed a champion. But... It's amazing. Like and and they're and you know, they don't even get to celebrate. The warrior <laughs> warrior just press slams Bobby Heenan. They run to the back, but it's a really fun match. It's a really really fun match. Um so moving on, we have a couple couple stinkers to get ready for the main event. Uh we have Hacksaw Jim Duggan with no theme music yet versus Bad News Brown. <laughs> they actually This is kind of fun even though it ends in a double disqualification. Bad News grabs the chair. The ref's like, hey, you can't use that. You can't use that. And Bad News swings away. And 
Duggan blocks it with a 2x4. So there's a bit of a back and forth with them. And, you know, they're both disqualified. It's fine. It was a good match, though. Was, uh, you know, until that, it was a lot of just brawling. Just a lot of brawling. Now, the next match is the warm-up for the main event. It's the Red Rooster going up against Bobby the Brain Heenan. Now, of course, Heenan's been assaulted by the Ultimate Warrior, so this match is very, very short. Red Rooster hits, like, one move and then pins Heenan really quickly. Yeah, uh, Wikipedia is saying it's 31 seconds long. And then the Brooklyn Brawler attacks the Red Rooster. So Brooklyn Brawler and Red Rooster were involved in the semi-main event of a WrestleMania. Keep that in mind for future reference historians. Uh, but yeah, so um, we get to the main event. The Mega Power is exploding. Uh, I was a little disappointed they didn't show the whole video package of uh, Hogan and Savage. Like, I wanted to do the, you got lust in your eyes for Elizabeth Hulkster. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Um, I wanted to hear that promo again. I love that promo. Uh, again, this is this is still me thinking Hulk Hogan is a heel. Uh, yeah, because, you know, he, he carried off another man's woman. That's right, Noam Dar. I'm looking at you. Although, it'd be really funny if Hulk Hogan called Elizabeth, Elizabeth. You know, like Alicia Fox. Never mind. Anyway, um, Hogan vs. Savage. You guys know how this goes. Come on. Randy Savage can't win two WrestleManias in Trump Plaza in two years. Of course, Hulk Hogan kicks out of the elbow drop. Uh, it's a fun match. It's not my favorite Hogan match. I think that's still got to go to the to the cage match with Bundy. But, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, Savage makes Hogan work. Got to give him that. But, you know, uh, this is this is kind of where we've hit peak Hulk Hogan. Because, oh, and I forgot to mention, this is also the WrestleMania before No Holds Barred comes out. So, of course, your star of No Holds Barred, Hulk Hogan, has to be the champion. And they showed a movie trailer for No Holds Barred. Yet another reason I think this is the first modern WrestleMania. We get a movie trailer, for Christ's sake. Because I guarantee this WrestleMania, they're probably going to show us a movie trailer. Maybe for the Jetsons meet the WWE superstars or whatever. Surf's Up 8, whatever bullshit they're doing. But we'll probably see some kind of movie trailer. And Jesse Ventura gets irate at Hulk Hogan. Like he, <laughs> I'm not sure if it's a work. I'm not sure if it's a shoot. He just starts screaming at the camera and he walks off. And even Girl Monsoon's like, well, oh, that was weird. <laughs> But yeah, it was, it was really, really funny. But yeah, Hulk Hogan wins, uh, becomes two-time WWF champion. Many more of those to come, obviously. But yeah, uh, you know, Randy will have his day. Randy will have his day in the sun at WrestleMania again. And it might take some time, but we'll get there. So yeah, uh, again, a really fun WrestleMania. Kind of long. Kind of long, but then again, with the ones that are coming up, I can't really complain about it too much. Uh Pretty solid card. WrestleMania 5 might be my favorite so far. Uh, might be my favorite. I know WrestleMania 3 gets a lot of play, but as I pointed out, WrestleMania 3, you know, a lot of matches are hit and miss. But this one was pretty solid all the way around, and it feels like a more current WWE program. The action's a lot quicker. You know, it, it just feels like it. Like, there's the goofiness. And some aspects, like with the Bushwhackers and stuff like that, it just feels more modern. Uh, you can definitely tell that there's a significant turning point from this point on, I think. And I'm pretty sure WrestleMania six in Toronto, pff, that's going to blow the doors off because they're going to be in the Sky Dome. It's going to be all lit up and everything. And it's Hogan vs. Warrior. So, yeah. I'm pretty sure WrestleMania 6 is going to blow this one off even more than WrestleMania 5 did. And it's only going up from there, folks. All right. So um, if you like this series, uh, there's plenty more to come. 27 by my count. Uh, but, yeah, hit me up. Hit, leave some comments in the YouTube in the YouTube link. Uh, hit us up on Facebook. Hit me up at MadMike4883 on the Twitters. Hit up at Mayhem Show with the hashtag MM if you want to ask me something. And, uh, yeah, so this has been Mad Mike. And we're heading down that mania road. So uh, I'll catch you next time in the Sky Dome. Uh oh.